God's grace and peace to you. Several announcements before we begin. One is that if you are in the Christmas musical play, which will be next week during worship, please stay for your costume fitting and pick up your costume. Also, we are setting up for that immediately following worship today. And if anybody can stay and help set up, many hands make light work. The parade yesterday, let's see if we can get the slide. There it is. We had snow machines, and it was magical. You might have seen, the, they moved the float out in front of the church. It says, Jesus is the sweetest gift, and that is true. Everybody that participated had a wonderful time. It um was an event that brought our congregation together for those who participated as well as uh, got our name out into the community. So thank you all who worked so hard to make that happen. Also, I wanted to tell you about tonight. I've been cooking this morning, so please come tonight. We're having, we're meeting at 345 and you need to bring a mask because we want to protect all the people that we will be singing to in the assisted living. So we will wear masks while we are singing in their facility. Um, we're going to two places, and then we are coming back to the church where we're going to eat soup and s snacks and desserts. And then I have a fun fellowship activity for everybody that's there. It's not too long, but it will get us thinking and laughing. So please plan on coming 345 today. All ages are welcome. I also wanted to tell you a tiny bit about Christmas Eve and Christmas morning. Christmas Eve, we are having our traditional carols and candle lighting service at 5 p.m. Five o'clock. We're hoping that folks can uh, will still have time to gather with their families or for dinners, things like that. Um, that we have a special treat that night, and that the community choir is joining our choir, and they will be singing um, on Christmas Eve. So the music music will be a special treat, and come and bring your friends and relatives. Then on Christmas morning. It's a little different because Sunday is Christmas. We are going to be worshiping casually. Jeans and Christmas sweaters over in the fellowship hall. We're eating breakfast together. I think it's going to be a cinnamon coffee cake. And come and we're going to worship, we're going to sing, and we're going to remember why we have this special day. Other announcements, there are boxes up here, and if you haven't done the reverse Advent calendar, it is not too late. Pick up a box, and in it is a list of things to fill the box with, and then you bring the boxes back after Christmas towards the first of the year, and the food gets distributed to people who are hungry. You know, there are so many uh, agencies that help right at Christmas time, but often after Christmas, they've spent the money, the paychecks aren't in, and the cupboard is bare. So please pick up a box and um, fill it up if you can. The gifts up front, in case you saw them, they are for the angel tree recipients. Many people picked up an angel tree tag when it had wish list of certain things that kids wanted and that's what these gifts are and today during our prayer we will be praying for those who will receive the angels gifts are there other announcements well let us prepare our hearts to worship God
Please stand and let us sing, first verse only, Angels from the Realm of Glory. You may be seated. It is a reunion every time we go home, every time we embrace those we love. No matter how long it has been, it feels like sunrise, like the clouds are parting and the rain has ended. It is joy, nothing less than pure joy, to grab a hold of those who are home for us who make home for us, whether we wake up to them every day or travel many miles to see them. It is a joy to go home. The prophet Zephaniah tells us to rejoice at the thought of going home. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being unburdened, being released to live, to fully live in the grace, that, grace and wonder of life itself surrounded by those who love us like no one else and then to live like our then to live that was our that our, like our, that was our truth <laughs> even now even here it is joy to go home John the Baptist reminds us however that it takes choices to live in this joy it doesn't just happen we choose to make life a joy by how we love others, by how we serve, how we give and care for others. By now we do our job, we do and how they impact the world around us. We build joy as we build a home in this world and the next. We light these candles, the candle of hope and of peace and of joy as a sign that we are on our way home and we walk with a skip in our step because we can see the destination and it is pure joy. It is time to go home. I invite you to pray with me. Living God, in the deserts and the dry places of our lives, we struggle, powerless and weak. Show us the way home. Lead us to places of healing and peace where we may grow in the power of your love. 
where we may flourish in the waters of life and where we may find everlasting joy and gladness. Amen. may be seated. This third Sunday in Advent, they lit the candle for joy. Last week it was peace, and the week before it was hope. But before we can grab hold and claim that hope, peace, and joy, we have to feel all right. We have to feel accepted by God and forgiven. Therefore, let us come together praying the prayer of confession, and then there will be time of silent confession. Let us pray. God of Advent, we live in the promise that you will fulfill your will for earth, Yet nations are in chaos, and our lives are often in turmoil. We are afraid of following your light, because it leads us into places where much is demanded of us. Forgive us when we take the easy way, choosing to ignore the opportunities for love and forgiveness that you place before us. We are often depressed and downhearted, especially during the holidays. Lord, remind us that you send us the joy 
your joy deep in our souls. Forgive us when we close ourselves off from your joy. Hear us as we continue our confessions in silence. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ came that we might have life and have it abundantly. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are forgiven. You may be seated. Will the children come forward? Toby, this way. Good morning. Hello. It's so good to see you. Here, do you want to hold Joseph? Wish you held it last time. Let's give it to Torvi this time. Here, would you like to hold the king? Here, it's back there. All right. That guy through. Go on up, guy. Hi. Well, good morning. I am so glad to see you. Merry Christmas. What are you supposed to say back? When somebody says Merry Christmas, what do you say? Merry Christmas. That's right. Let's try again. Merry Christmas. All right. Now, today, I want to tell you about Mary and Joseph. We talked about them last week, remember? And Mary was going to have a baby. And Joseph had a dream, and the angel came and told him, Now, you can hold the basket, and I'm going to hold up Joseph here. Joseph's family. Oh, oh, are you okay? Joseph's, I'm sorry, Joseph's family was from Bethlehem, but they were living in Nazareth, which was a pretty long way away. Cars hadn't been invented yet, but the, the king made a decree. Let's see, the king, thanks, the king was Caesar Augustus, and Caesar said that Everybody needs to be counted. It's a called a census. So everybody needs to be counted. So you need to go to the town where your daddy grew up. Well, the town where Joseph's daddy grew up was Bethlehem. And so Joseph had just married Mary. And they had to go to Bethlehem. It was a long way. 
it was over 90 miles. And there weren't any cars. They had to walk or ride an animal. And it was going to take over a week. And Mary was going to have her baby soon. So they went on this long, long trip. And they finally get to Bethlehem. And do you remember what happened? There was not any room. That's my yeah. microphone, a different microphone. There wasn't any room because all these other people had to, had to go to Bethlehem. Because, because they were scared. Well, because they had to be counted. They had to be counted. And so they all went to Bethlehem, and there wasn't any room. I don't think I want <laughs> Joseph on my head. <laughs> <laughs> so... So when they got there, let me tell you, when they got there, what did Mary and Joseph do? Do you know? Wait a minute. What did they do? They went to stay somewhere else in a place for animals, didn't they? That's right. And we know that because Jesus was laid in a feeding trough because there wasn't even a baby bed. You're learning about that. I'm so glad. Will you pray with me? Everybody wiggle your fingers. Tap your shoulders. Rub your hands together. Mm -mm. Let's pray. You say it after me. Dear God, we thank you for Mary and Joseph and for being with them even before Jesus was born. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. I like your sweater. To stand in his presence where mercy surrounds us is more than we ever deserve. To bow down and worship cannot give.
Let us prepare our hearts to hear God's word. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, speak to us through these readings, Lord. Speak to us and guide us that we might be inspired for greater service and might be drawn closer to you. In Christ's name, amen. Listen for the Old Testament reading from Isaiah 9, 2 to 6. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And from the New Testament, reading from the Gospel of John, chapters 1 to 5 and 14, listen for God's word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God. Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and the Word became flesh. That's what Christmas is all about. God becoming one of us, becoming flesh, living and experiencing a human life. He came as a baby, born to a young girl and her fiancé in the city of David. Bethlehem, way back 2,000 years ago. And millions are still talking about it. 
why. Millions still call him Lord. Why? Millions still worship him with awe, like the shepherds. Why? Millions still bring him gifts, honoring him with reverence as the wise men did. And I am asking why. You see, I don't believe that it's because people love the sentimental story of the angel scene. I mean, I think we love that sentimental story, but that's not the reason. And I don't believe that it's because people love the cute renditions of the stable scene acted out by darling children in bathrobes. I don't even believe that it's because the account of Christ's birth is in the Bible. I don't think that's it. Why do millions honor and worship him? Why do millions call him Lord? I think that the idea of God living as one of us gives us hope that the great almighty creator knows what it is like to live on this earth as a human. That God understands our challenges, our sorrows, our struggles, our griefs. And that gives us hope. Hope that we are understood and known. And even in the knowing, we are loved. But even more than that hope, I believe that millions call him Lord because they have experienced the living God through Christ. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a German pastor and teacher during World War II, said, a Christian's life does not consist in words, but in experience. No one is a Christian without experience. Now that doesn't mean life experience, but the experience of God. Christians everywhere in all different cultures living in all different circumstances, speaking a multitude of languages with a variety of ages and situations, call Jesus Lord, not because of his birth or even because of his death, but because Christ lives with us and we can know him, we can experience God through him. Do you remember the words of the angel in Joseph's dream where he was instructed not to be afraid to take Mary as his wife? The angel said, all this took place to fulfill what has been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God is with us. The angel is referring to the prophecy found in Isaiah chapter 7. Emmanuel, God with us. What are some of the times when we experience Emmanuel, God with us? Is it within the faith community during worship or Bible study? Sometimes. Do we experience Emmanuel out in nature, at the beach, or at a sunset in the mountains? Sometimes. Often at pivotal times in our lives, our wedding our dad's funeral, at the birth of a child. We are confronted 
with Emmanuel, God with us. Sometimes when reflecting on the past, we recognize God's providential hand in our lives and are overcome with a sense of Emmanuel. Do we experience Emmanuel through music? Yes, sometimes. What about when we are in deep prayer? Yes, those can be times of Emmanuel as well. This Advent journey toward Christmas, I want to challenge you to look for and seek out Emmanuel times in your life. Be aware, for God is with us in our daily lives and in our darkest nights. Speaking of darkest nights, Dietrich Bonhoeffer was arrested by the Nazis in April of 1943 and held in prison eventually in a concentration camp. That Christmas of 1943, Bonhoeffer wrote a letter, a Christmas letter to his parents from prison. And I'd like to read you a part of that letter. Dear parents, above all, you must not think that I will let myself sink into depression during this lonely Christmas. I don't need to tell you how great my longing for freedom and for all of you is. But you have, for so many decades, provided us with Christmases so incomparably beautiful that the grateful memories of them are strong enough to outshine even a dark Christmas. From a Christian point of view, A Christmas in a prison cell is no special problem. It will probably be celebrated here in this house more sincerely and with more meaning than outside where the holiday is observed in name only. As I reflected on what Bonhoeffer had to say in that letter, I wondered what kinds of Christmases would my children remember? Would they remember ones that would outshine any darkness? Then I asked myself, am I building in my children and grandchildren an inner legacy independent of the change of times and conditions. Parents and grandparents out there, that kind of thing is not built on presents and packages under the tree. An inner legacy like that is built on scripture, on faith, on Emmanuel experiences. Have you ever talked in your family or with your children about a time that you experienced Emmanuel? It may have been at Christmas that those words came true for you, or it may have been at another time in your life. Those testimonies of faith are powerful, and sometimes we're hesitant to talk about them because they are so intensely personal, but hearing one another's Emmanuel stories has a way of strengthening our own faith. You see, I want my children and grandchildren to have a happy Christmas and to have happy Christmas memories. I want to get them great gifts for Christmas And when they were little, I wanted them to have their picture taken with Santa. But more than all of that, if there was never never another Christmas celebration, I want them to know Jesus Christ, to experience again and again in their lives, Emmanuel, God with us. 
for them to know in their core that the word became flesh and dwelt among us and that that makes all the difference. Whether they are in a good place in their lives or whether they are in a darkness so great that a concentration camp doesn't even compare. Having experienced for themselves, Emmanuel, God is with us. That would be the greatest legacy I could give them. And that's one of the reasons that I became a pastor. It is because that that is my dream for all children everywhere, for all teens, for all adults, that each would experience Emmanuel. May you experience God with us as you journey to Christmas this year. Amen. Let us stand as we sing the last verse of the little town of Bethlehem. Sing it as a prayer. who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing 229 in the hymn book. The words will be on the screen. Sing we now of Christmas, verses 1, 2, and 3.
Now go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.